My name is Judith King. I'm here at the Liberal Jewish Synagogue in St. John's Wood, where on Sunday, the 26th of March at five o'clock, we're going to be holding the most wonderful concert called The Human Spirit. In this concert, there will be three new pieces of music specially commissioned by the LJS. And these works have been written for us by Roxana Panufnik, Toby Young and Julian Marshall. And we're delighted that they were able to come here today for us to have a discussion about their new works. Lovely to see you all. Thank you so much for coming to the LGS today. So we're going to be talking about the three pieces which Cathy Heller-Jones commissioned you to write for the LJS. And um, it was through a wonderful donation, as, as you will know, from Merrila Frankel in honour of her late husband and grand granddaughter. It was a lovely thing that she decided that in memory of them, uh, that she wanted music written specially. And so we have three compositions. You, you Roxana, it's a setting of Adonai Ma'adam, which um, in liberal Judaism is translated our, as what are we, eternal one, that you take note of us. And that's scored for um, choir, soprano, alto, tenor and bass and organ. And then um, Julian, your setting is of Psalm 100 for double choir, organ and tambourine. Wow. Um, <laughs> I want to hear about the tambourine. And uh, that's very joyous. Um, Hariu Adonai Kol Haaretz, shout for joy, all the earth. And then you, Toby, we have the Torah service. So uh, that's four separate pieces and therefore choir and organ. So I wanted to start off by asking you um, how you reacted to when Cathy approached you to commission these pieces. What, was, what were the kind of things you thought about and were kind of excited by or possibly a bit nervous about, whatever? So let's start with you, Roxana. Well, I was so excited because I'd been writing Christian liturgical music for 30 years. And it was my first liturgical commission in another faith. So, um, but also the extra exciting dimension is that I am actually technically Jewish through my mother's family, um, although I'm a practicing Catholic. But I've always been fascinated and very drawn to Jewish religious music and chant. Mm. Interesting. So big Jewish connection yes. there, which you were able to um, do something with. Yes. <laughs> and that was the first time you'd been commissioned to write something. It was, um, it was. And I'd, I'd written um, my uncle, my Jewish, late Jewish uncle, um, who was an MP, had a memorial service at St Margaret's, Westminster. And um, he very much wanted... Um, his his Jewish roots to be reflected in that. So I have written an introit, a, a judo Christian introit called Hallelujah, Alleluia. Oh, so but that was that wasn't a commission. It was my my gift. Yes, but yes, um, yes. Lovely. So it was it was especially exciting to get this particular commission. Yes, Thank felt you. very honoured. Lovely. Thank you. And Julian. Yeah, I was thrilled to bits and. Um, also, it felt like a real honour. And I just had recently met Cathy, mm -hmm. and I approached her about um, the possibility of, of performing a work here, um, which was quite different. And um, and so it kind of came actually completely out of the blue. Right. And for me, it was a, a, a really wonderful opportunity in, in many different ways. First of all, it wasn't until my mother died that I began to really explore the question of all, kind of what is being Jewish. Mm. My mother was Jewish, my father was not. Right. So, uh, were you brought up? No, Jewish? not at all. Very in a very non-religious household. Yes. Yeah, so, but you were aware. Very much so. It was. It was. Um, it was it kind of celebrated in a way being being Jewish, and mm -hmm. and and and, and uh, but but in a very non-formal way. Yeah. And a very non-practicing way. Right. Not even uh, Passover or anything like that. No, that came later when I again when my when my both my parents had died and I um, developed. Um, deep friendships with with two male um, friends of mine, Jewish male friends, and they they kind of they were my education, mm. and and actually what what became a long inquiry and uh, 
particular relationship with with a with a deceased poet um, called Gertrude Colmer, who who perished in Auschwitz in 1943. And uh, th- so it's, there's been a journey mm. um, for me. So I was thrilled. What was really challenging was writing in Hebrew. Right. Yes. yes. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. come on. We'll yeah. come on yeah. to that. <laughs> yes. Interesting. And uh, Toby. Well, um, unlike you, I've known Kathy for quite a few years. I used to be a singer, and so Kathy and I used to tour around the world in various different guises. So I kind of came from a friendship, really, that uh, I, I would never explored working together in this kind of format. So I'd only ever known her with the experimental music she does and the kind of more yes. um, sort of you know other other world stuff. Yes. Um, and so it's really lovely to be able to kind of connect up both of our, our interests and our, our kind of heritages and writing of this. And as, as you guys say, a real honour to be asked for such an amazing and auspicious occasion as well. Mm. And Jewish connection? Slightly long story. So um, my granny came over on the kinder transport. She was from Vienna. Uh, she, we now have kind of pieced together that she um, grew up in a kind of Jewish household. But when she came over, she got told, you're now a Christian girl. Go and, uh, go and uh, understand what that means and it's just a way to save her. And so we, we grew, I grew up as a Christian and it was um, sort of part of our, our house. And then when I was about 18, I think it was, we discovered, we started to piece together and discovered that she's from, from a Jewish line and that we have a, that connection. And so it was a slightly strange thing for me as someone who'd gr- um, kind of grown up in that, that faith. But also then I was a choral scholar at King's College Cambridge singing in church every single day. <laughs> and so trying to understand what all these things meant. And, and so for me, kind of uh, the synagogue and um, access to that Jewish part of my, my life came through music after I left university I went and I joined a choir at a synagogue and started to understand through that as a kind of not quite part of the synagogue, but sort of not not part of the synagogue and started understanding what the liturgy meant to me, but through the musical element. And so yes. being able to connect it up and be able to write something as part of a service as well as something for a concert is yes. really meaningful for me. I know you had, Rosanna, written other liturgical music, but not Jewish. But had either of you written any Christian liturgical music? Uh, yeah, I've written quite a lot, actually. Yes. Quite a lot of my, my core output is for, for Christian services. Yes. Um, but I've written a little bit of Jewish music as well for Jewish services. Too. Right. And, and you, Yes, Julian? I had. I, but, but yes, I have, to, a, to, a, to, a, to some extent, not yes. extensively. So t- let's move on then to the writing for a synagogue as opposed to a church. In terms of, obviously, there's the whole business, as you alluded to, of setting Hebrew, but also I'm just wondering about anything else about the process of composition, which was different because it was for, because it's within Judaism and a, a, a different a different religion. So um, anybody want to kick off on that, writing set? Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, actually, for me, it was more about the acoustic. Um, so... Uh, when you're writing for Christian worship, you're writing for um, music that's going to be made in in big sort of cavernous stone yes. buildings. So the acoustic is very different and there's a lot of reverberance. Whereas here, it's a lovely acoustic, but because there's a carpet and there's a lot more wood, it's slightly drier. Mm. So um, whereas I would rely in a church on um, my harmonies sort of overlapping naturally. Um, I had to get them to work a little bit harder in this drier acoustic. Yes, that's very interesting. I hadn't really ever thought about that, but now you mention it, it's it's very obvious. It is a completely different acoustic to uh, yeah. all those chapels and churches one sings in. Mm-hmm. Yes. So how about how about you? Uh, well, for, for the thing I said, I, I said. Um, kind of all the elements of the Torah service, which means that there are some bits which are very small and some bits which maybe have a bit more significance. Mm. And um, whereas maybe in in kind of Christian music, they're often quite kind of clear places for where the music goes and everyone sort of sits and waits and is reverent for it. In the Jewish service, there are lots of moments where people are standing, they've been standing for a while. We want to get on with it, we've got to get on to the next bit. Someone's holding a very heavy (laughs) scroll. All of these issues that actually um, kind of make it more like like theatre than and kind of music for, mm. for liturgy. And so I, I had to deal with that and kind of knowing what pacing would happen, knowing where things were coming out of and how to kind of bring up the energy very quickly and those sort of, you know, crafting the, the space, yes. I guess. Yes, yeah. And... Yeah, so w- for me, I mean, Psalm 100 is just so full-heartedly celebratory. <laughs> yes. And uh, so I, it was just felt like a wonderful permission to kind of just go for it in and write a very full-coloured and, and ex- rather exuberant piece, I hope. Yes. <laughs> and um... I, What I should have said at the beginning, what fabulous pieces, because 
we've heard, we've heard your piece, Roxana, at the most recent Yom Kippur service, and it was just beautiful. It was just so wonderful. Everybody was so moved by it. Mm. And then we haven't yet heard your pieces, which of course will be performed at the concert on the 26th, along with yours. But we're learning them now in the, in the members' choir as well. So um, Is it going well? Oh, going very well. Oh, it's <laughs> very, enthu very enthusiastic indeed and loving yeah. it. So what about this business of setting words <laughs> in Hebrew? And how good was your Hebrew at the outset? <laughs> Anybody no, got any claims? Whatsoever. And um, in fact, I, I work really hard with um, Igor, oh. who's so helpful, Rabbi mm. Igor Zinkoff. And, um, and I was working from four different things. So there was a sort of transliteration of the Hebrew text, because of course it's a completely different mm. alphabet. And then um, pronunciation of the words, and then where the stresses are. Yeah. And then I had a word-for-word -word translation because the word order was going to be different. And I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to make the mistake of, um, you know, making a big deal out of a connective or something. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was quite intense, but it was very gratifying. Mm. In what way gratifying? Um, it was really lovely to feel the music of the words and the rhythm and the colours that I got from the words. Mm. And um, I have experience of doing this before. I once had to set 19 poems in Estonian, <laughs> which I don't speak a word of. So um, I, I had form, and I like a challenge. <laughs> and you had one there. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm glad you, you, you res well, it's wonderful you responded so positively to that challenge, well, you all did. Um, not that you had much of a choice, actually, because it was always going to be in Hebrew. <laughs> so anybody, do either of you have any comments about setting? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, it was it was an extraordinary experience. I mean, I was, it was it was a, it feels like a deep privilege, but also just uh, yes, surrendering to really not having a clue, <laughs> and uh, and that that was a kind of wonderful process, really, and also uh, and and. It was astonishing to to note just the the assumptions that I that I made. For example, about a word having a certain amount of syllables, to discover mm -hmm. that what I thought maybe a two or three syllable word may may turn out to have five yes. or something like that. And um, so I kept on getting ascending revisions to Kathy, and she said, "Yeah, almost." <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Rabbi Igor or, or um, other people kind of chipping in and saying, "Actually," and I just really respected that. Yes. A diligence, really. Yes. And, um, so I felt I had my, really had my work cut out. Yes. Yeah. So, um, what about anything about when you think of Jew when people say Jewish music? I mean, I've had various friends who aren't familiar with Jewish music and say, "Well, what do you sing in the synagogue?" And I was just wondering whether you had any thoughts about any different tonalities, modes, or anything which you had in your mind when you were actually composing. Yeah, so um, I set the Torah service, and when I was writing, I was very aware that I sung a lot of different Torah services over the years. And so trying to kind of tease out what maybe is part of the Nusak, what's part of the harmonic language that's the very idiomatic, and what's just what someone else wrote was quite a challenge to me. Mm. Um, I, I spent quite a lot of time trying to work out how to kind of have a fresh take on the words, but still make it feel like something that would almost be sung, you know, as part of this, this world all the time anyway. So that it's not kind of a piece of new music that comes in and is different and odd, but it sort of just fits into the tapestry and the kind of the furniture of, yes. of the building. Yes. Um, but it's a yeah, quite tricky balance, I think, to tread between something new and something challenging on one hand as a composer, but also something that's really ingrained in the tradition on the other. Yes, yes. And do you have any, either of you have any thoughts on that? I'm sure you do, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, Kathy said to me that, um, so my my piece was really to evoke the atmosphere of Yom Kippur and um, redemption and regeneration. Um, and there are some very beautiful Ashkenazi Jewish modes that I've I've used a fair amount in my music. Yes. Um, so the I used my favourite one, which is I'm not going to begin to try and pronounce. Um, their titles in, <laughs> Sing it in for Hebrew. Us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's also known as the Ukrainian Dorian Gypsy mode, um, and it's very beautiful. And it's got it's got light and dark. Sorry, say that again. The Ukraine. the Ukrainian Dorian Gypsy mode. Okay, so we all need to Google that. Yeah, you do. And it's it's got um, it's got darkness and light in it. It's very evocative. Mm. Um, but um, but also my my piece was um, very much influenced by a conversation I had with Marilla, who sponsored the commission, talking about her husband and granddaughter who were so tragically lost, and it was very important to her that. Um, the, the happiness and positivity and playfulness of both her late husband and late granddaughter were reflected in the piece, as well as this Yom Kippur um, redemption yes. and, and darkness. So, um, so yes, I had to fit quite a lot in in a short space of time, but that particular mode helped me do mm. it. Mm. Very interesting. Julian. I think for me that there wasn't... I think what I wanted to try and avoid was was falling into cliche. I mean, not mm. being well versed in kind of Jewish musical tradition and 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 uh, and, and language, and uh, in in other than what I kind of picked up through the years and enjoyed very much. But I just felt that the opportunity here was to serve the text and just as kind of, in a sense, just trust whatever came out, and not to try and steer it in any particular direction. Mm. So um, I uh, that there is there were one or two kind of scalic inferences in there. But, but other than that, not nothing particular. I, I sometimes find that that becomes clearer when the piece is written rather than actually in the writing of it. And there was something for me, there's, there's, a, um, there's a physicist whose name is uh, Bernardo Castrop, as a scientist, and he, he said a very wonderful thing, I think, which is that, um, that something to do with rather than fixating on what do I want from the world, what does the world want from me? And there was some, again that word surrender comes in, and I think that's one of the things I really kind of felt was exciting about this, or Psalm 100, was the idea of surrender in, in that way that somehow it's surrendering to. I mean, it's highly devotional and it's it's highly praiseworthy, and somehow that idea of surrendering to something which is just way bigger than the, than me and my my little wants and mm. obsessions felt mm. very liberating somehow. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much, Rox Roxana Panufnik, Julian Marshall, Toby Young. Thank you very much for speaking with us today. Thank you. More than having us. Yeah.